Live from the Draft League City Newsroom, this is DLC News. The only news program you'll pay extra for as we release more headlines. Good afternoon, I'm Aaron Bondell. Our top story today, a second arrest, has been made in the Hacksgate case that is currently throwing the Pokemon Premier League into chaos and scandal. Superblar, a member of the notorious Council of Boomers, was apprehended yesterday trying to flee the city. This follows the capture of Ashton Akai three days ago. The two are wanted for the intentional manipulating of luck that led to the first and only victory for Coach Shroom and Parasect Germain two weeks ago. We can now go live to our correspondent, Matthew Block, who is at the scene. Uh, Matt, what can you tell us? You know, we're not so bad for a big chew. Matt. We've got quite a bit in common. I mean, you're a Pokemon, and I'm a human. Matt, what are you doing? Well, what does that really mean? I mean, I could use moves too. I could use water gun. Matt, focus up, come on. See? That would have been super effective on a Charmander. What have you got that could do that? Sir? No, that doesn't mean anything. Oh dear, anyway, she is, I guess. Matt, we're live! Fuck off. Just fuck off, just fuck off. Get out of the way, come on. Alright. Um, yes, uh, thanks, Aaron. Yes, a major breakthrough in this case that's seen a second member of this infamous gang brought to ground. Council of Boomers member Superbar was caught hiding last night here at this abandoned bar after trying to buy a plane ticket in exchange for a pack of Werther's Originals. Now, Superblar maintains his innocence, relying on the defence that he's too old to remember what he did two weeks ago. The outpouring of anger from the public, however, about what has occurred in that fateful battle has been unmatched in recent times. Matt, what message have the authorities got for Coach Shroom following the allegations? Well, I spoke with Detective Max Stryker just a few hours ago, and he told me that the quest to bring Coach Shroom and the entire council to justice would be unwavering in its intensity. One well, thing's for sure, Aaron, this kind of action never goes unpunished. Matt Block there, reporting. And joining me now from his home office is Sir Ian Grace, head professor of the Battle Department at Draft League University. Uh, Sir Ian, uh, thanks for speaking with us today. Now, regarding the allegations, what sort of impact could such actions have on the scene and the city at large? Well, thank you, Aaron. Well, bending luck in this way can have severe repercussions, and it's something we've been studying at the highest level. Um, the ability to manipulate situations to give one a better position uh, is a phenomenon we've actually termed the hinged advantage expression. Um, which we are calling hacks for short. Um, if these people are indeed misusing and abusing hacks, uh, it, it could affect the very fabric of our reality. Interesting. And uh, what sort of effect could this have at an individual level? Well, studies so far are, are still in their early stages. Um, but regarding Coach Shroom, undertaking, uh, sorry, undertaking such activities could certainly lead to paranoia and anger and in fact, in some extreme cases, we've seen subjects manifesting an alter ego uh, whom they hold responsible when the effects inevitably backfire. Um, this could have dangerous impact on both Coach Shroom and the city in general. So Ian Grace, uh, thank you again uh, for that and for joining us today. Now, Coach Shroom's whereabouts are currently still unknown, but with half of his council behind bars, one has to assume it's only a matter of time before he joins them. For DLC News, I'm Aaron Bundell.
such activities could certainly lead to paranoia and anger. In some extreme cases, we've seen subjects manifesting an alter ego uh, whom they hold responsible. Hello everyone, Shroom River here and welcome to week six of the Pokemon Premier League Bolt Division. Yes, indeed. Now, last time we uh, we got belly bolted. It wasn't fun. We got absolutely smacked around by belly bolt uh, and took another three zero loss, <coughs> which is not ideal. Um, and things don't get any easier. Uh, we are hoping to springboard off our week four when it hasn't quite worked, and now it's all powerful opponents from here on out. And that is starting off this week with. Dr. Slacking and the Cotswold Whimsicott. His link's down in the description. Make sure you check them out. He makes top tier content. He's a top tier guy. So do please make sure you check um, check that out. Uh, his team is not fun to, uh, to prep for. He actually made some changes um, over the course of the week five to week six break. Uh, dropping out some of the likes of, uh, I think he dropped like four Pokemon, including Clefable and Bronzong, which I was very happy to see him not have anymore. But the team he now has is Chi Yu, uh, Iron Treads, Grimmsnarl, um, Dragonite, Quaquavel, uh, Iron Thorns, Hisuian Electrode, Frostlass, Espathra, and Rabska. Uh, there's two Terra Captains. The Hisuian Electrode can go Electric, Fairy, Ice. The Rabska can go Psychic, Fighting, and Bug. Uh, he's got some absolute premier threats going on there. Some of the new stuff out of that. I mean, Chi Yu, people have had issues prepping for the entirety of the season. Quaquavel has, or Quaquavel, however you say it, um, has been a monumental threat ever since <clears throat> League started for this generation. Pursuing Electrode, especially with a Terror, is really frightening. He's got some really good setup stuff. The Dragonite, the Grimmsnarl, one of his new additions, um, is is nasty. You know, bringing that in for the priority screens, that's something I was looking at drafting, but changed my mind. Um, so yeah, he's got some really nasty stuff going on there. A lot of powerful setup that's not to be taken lightly, and he's had a very good season with it so far. But we've also made some changes to our team, as I hinted at last time. Um, we've dropped out a couple of Mons. Uh, Shaman is gone. I looked at the matchups I had left. Shaman only came to one game, and it didn't look like it was coming to any of the other three after week five. So I got rid of Shaman. I also, and it breaks my heart to do this, I got rid of Toxtricity. I wanted to make Toxtricity work, but, you know, in a draft where I don't have a lot of powerful natural defense other than, like, the Sylveon, and maybe the Rachi. You know, I liked having Sandslash on there, but honestly, it hasn't really stood up to the power creep in the new meta. So, what that meant was I didn't have the bulk to wear down opponents in order to give Toxtricity a good chance to set up. So, unfortunately, Toxtricity has had to go, but that did mean I had a lot of uh, money left to spend, and I'm just gonna edit my chair. There we go, I'm back on a good level. My chair is in need of an upgrade. Um, it did mean that I had some money, some some points to splash out on some new mons, and they are both going to debut in this game. But we'll get onto the team. Uh, first up, I have Hisuian Samurot is here. Um, assault vest, uh, fully specially defensive set uh, with a negative speed nature. Uh, we've got Ceaseless Edge, Aqua Cutter, Ice Beam, and Sucker Punch on there. Uh, this is uh, my best check to Chi Yu. Um, if Chiyu is specs, there are no counters to it, 
Um, I'm not anticipating a Specs Chi Yu. I'm thinking it will be there, but I'm thinking he pretty much has to run Timid Scarf. So that's what I'm anticipating coming. And in that instance, Samrot will take it on. So I'm happy to have that. Um, I run mixed. Uh, honestly, with the speed tierings, it doesn't really matter that it's negative nature. It still outspeeds the things it needs to. Um, Ice Beam mostly on there for the Dragonite. Sucker Punch is very good priority. The other moves I pretty much run every time on Samurai. So that's that. Next up, we have Dual Screen Sylveon. Light Clay set here um, with Reflect and Light Screen. Uh, we also have uh, the Moonblast and the Wish. Wish is going to be very important for the likes of that Hisuian Samrock. I have Moonblast on there and Cute Charm. Now, Cute Charm is allowed in this um, in this league. Um, honestly, there was no sense in running Pixelate because I'm not running Hyper Voice because of that Electrode. And I'm fully expecting Soundproof Electrodes <clears throat> to act as an answer to Sylveon. I'm actually expecting Taunt Soundproof Electrode, which will shut down most forms of Sylveon, especially the Pixelate ones. <clears throat> but this thing is really here to pass wishes around and get those screens up. I'm going to need those screens to try and counteract some of his dangerous setup moves. Next up, we have one of our new members of the team. With Toxtricity gone, I needed um, a, an electric type. Um, I also kind of wanted another electric immunity because uh, Sand Slash, like I say, just isn't really keeping up with the meta. So what I did was spend the bulk of my points that I have from the transfers on Thunderous Therium. Yes, I've used Thunderous Incarnate a lot. I've never really used Thunderous Therium, <clears throat> but I really wanted this guy. It's got a nice base 101 speed. It is a special nuke. It can run mixed. And basically, this set is fuck it, we ball. Because we've gone Wild Bolt Storm, Focus Blast, Sludge Bomb, and Agility with the Heavy Duty Boots. Um, yeah. We're running quite low accuracy moves, but honestly, I've got nothing really to lose at this point. Thunder Steering with an agility can do a lot of damage probably in the mid game. Just get as much damage as possible on a lot of his mons to make way for some of my other Pokemon further on down the line. Um, I have to run maxed out speed in case the Chi Yu isn't scarfed and I can't get up an agility, but um, hopefully, with screen support from Sylveon, we'll be able to do that. Um, these moves hit a lot of his mons. Originally, I was going to try and do Double Dance uh, with the Nasty Plot, but Sludge Bomb is going to be useful for that Grim Snarl. He's brought it in this week. I'm expecting it to be here. So that is going to be one of the new members, Bohemian the Thunderstyrian. Next up, we have a standard member, and that is going to be my Annihilate. Uh, AV Annihilate, full physically defensive, uh, with Drain Punch, Rage Fist, bleh, Rage Fist, Ice Punch, and Gunk Shot. This will hit a lot of his mons super effectively. It's also going to be my main answer and switch into the Iron Treads, which I see coming. Um, it will block the Rapid Spin for my Hazard Stacking team. Um, it will take hits really well with that um, max HP, max defense. I am actually running a specially defensive nature, though. With the Assault Vest, this is going to help at least take one hit from, again, that Chi Yu, which I'm really afraid of. Um... The standard moves on there, I would like to run U-turn, but realistically, I'm going to need a way to hit that Grim Snarl, so Gunk Shot is what I've gone for on there. Next up, we have the second new member of the team. I got rid of Toxtricity, I wanted a Grounded Poison type, and I really wanted something bulky, so we have gone with Seabad, the Hisuian Quillfish. Yes, I've gone with Hisuian Quillfish. I think it's going to do quite well for me. Um is just a naturally very good defensive mon. Intimidate helps out that a lot. We've gone Fizz Death here today with the Violite. Barb Barrage, Crunch, Toxic, and Haze with the Terra Fairy. This is one of my Terra Captains, and it can go Dark, Water, or Fairy. I switched up Sand Slash to give the Terra Captaincy to this guy instead. <clears throat> yeah, this is going to be a really good answer to a lot of his uh, premier physical setup sweepers. It completely walls out the Quackwavel. And it does a decent job, <coughs> excuse me, against the Dragonite. Dragonite can run Earthquake. I'm expecting it to be this week. Uh, if I Terra Fairy, it'll take those hits well, especially with an Intimidate. Iron Heads, Unstabs, won't be doing an inordinate amount to my Terra Fairying. Um, and realistically, I'm just looking to Toxic and Barb Barrage my way through his physical offensive setup. And keep this thing healthy with Sylveon's Wish, if at all possible. 
So that is going to be Quillfish. Last member of the team is going to be Scarfed Cleavor, making its return. <clears throat> Maxed out attack and speed, uh, so that it will speed tie with a plus one Qu Quaquavel after an Aqua Step or a Rapid Spin. Uh, we've got Stone Axe, Brick Break, Aerial Ace, and U-Turn. I would have loved to have run close combat, but again, that Grim Snarl is going to be a problem if it gets up its screens. I have my own trees to counteract them, or at least like, you know, level the playing field. But that Grim Snarl could be a real issue, and I want the Brick Break to be able to get through those screens if they are indeed brought. So that is going to be my team. Looking at my opponent, I'm expecting, I mean, the Chi Yu has got to come. I'm absolutely anticipating the Chi Yu. Um, those, those, those first five, actually, I would anticipate Chi Yu, Treads, Grimmsnarl, um, Dragonite, Quaquavel, one or both of them. The more likely one is going to be the Quaquavel. The Electrode is absolutely going to be here. Um, I don't see the Iron Thorns coming. I don't think it has a good matchup. Similarly, the Rabska, I don't see that coming. Espathra is a possibility, um, but I do have two Assault Vest users and my Hisuian Quillfish, which should be able to take it on fairly well. The Frostlass is an option. Honestly, the only two I don't see coming are Rabskut and Thorns. And of the other, what is it, eight, I think the less likely ones, well, the real likely ones for me are Chiyu, Treads, Grimmsnarl, and Quaquavel, and the, uh, the Hisuian Electrode. Dragonite could be there, Espathra could be there. Frostlass is a possibility. Um, Especially if he wants to stop me from brick breaking to get rid of the screens. If the Grim Snarl is there, then the Frostlass could well be that last member, but hard to say. Either way, that is going to be my team going into this one, so let's get right to the battle and see how things play out. So, Matt's team, and he has decided to bring Espathra, Chi Yu, Quaquavel, Frostlass, Dragonite, and Electrode. A lot of what I was expecting, um, but no treads, and really crucially, no Grim Snarl. Really happy to see no Grimmsnarl. Uh, the chances of screens on his side is much lower with that. The Frostlass is there, and looking at his team, it's looking for me to be, the leads are looking like either Chi Yu, just to hit something hard, Frostlass as a spike lead, or the Electrode because it's quick. Either way, Assault Vest Annihilate is probably my best bet. Um, I can get big hits on any of them, and sort of go from there. So I'm going to be leading with my Annihilate. Uh, let's get into the battle and see uh, how Dr. Slacking is going to respond. So, here we go. Battle start, Paraset Germain versus the Cotswold Whimsicots. Matt, as you can see here, is going to lead with his Frostlass, and to me this means Sash Spikes lead. So I'm going to go with my Annihilate, and he could T-wave me, but realistically speaking, he's likely to be Sashed, He's going to want to get those hazards up, seeing very little chance of removal on my side. So I'm just going to go for Rage Fist and get some damage and see what he's going to do from there. So, he is indeed going to go for that first layer of spikes. Um, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to prevent him from getting two up in any way, shape or form. If I had U-Turn, I'd have gone for it then and gone straight into my Cleavor. As you can see, I get good damage and he gets the Cursed Body on my Rage Fist. Now, this is kind of irrelevant. I was always going to hard switch here into my Cleavor because Sash Spikes lead Frostlass will often be running Destiny Bond and that's kind of what I'm anticipating to go for here. Either that or another layer of Spikes. Either way, my best switch is into Morgan who can outspeed, kill it with a Stone Axe and get Rocks up as a bonus for me. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm uh, going to recall my Annihilate Pop to get some good damage on the Frostlass go into my Cleavor here. Take a bit of Spikes damage, and as you can see, uh, Matt here is just going to go for his second layer, which is, you know, unavoidable. There was nothing I could do about that. Those Spikes are going to be there to stay for the duration of the game. But what I can do is just click Stone Axe, outspeed with my Choice Scarf, and make sure that this thing goes down without doing anything else. And that's what's going to happen. Go for the Stone Axe. That's the end of Frostlass. And I get my Rocks up. Now, important thing to note here, he gets the Cursed Body Proc again on my Stone Axe. I had already looked a way to bring up my Cleavor Calc. I missed that, and that's going to be very important. Fully anticipating Quaquavel to come in, I was very surprised to see Dragonite. It comes in, it takes the Rocks damage, which means it's not Boots, which to me screams weakness policy. So I was like, well, why would he bring this in 
on my cleavor, who is very clearly scarfed into stone axe. So I rapidly went to my calcs to try and work out what kind of weird Dragonite set this is going to be. I was certain of weakness policy, but I was like, is it going to be um, the damage reducing berry for rock types? So I was very confused, and this messed with me a lot. As you can see, the time goes down. I run out of time, and I'd missed that I couldn't use Stone Axe, so I end up going for Struggle. He's going to then go for the Iron Head, and what I'm going to try and do here is play my live footage so you can hear what happens. What? Oh no! Oh, mm. Fuck! <sighs> yeah, I made a mistake in a game, don't worry about it. <laughs> so having run out of time on that turn and lost my cleaver for no reason, I eventually go into my Hisuian Quillfish. This is going to allow me to get an Intimidate onto this Dragonite. He's at minus one, even an Earthquake will not be doing much to me. And I can go for a Toxic and just start wearing this thing down. And in fact, with a Toxic up, Barbarage will probably be able to take it out on the next turn. He's going to go for Dragon Dance here and set up. Uh, but it does mean he's going to be at neutral attack and plus one speed, the speed not mattering because he outpaces me anyway. But I'm able to get a Toxic off here, land it onto the Dragonite. That's going to be really useful. Um, with that damage that the Toxic is going to do, the combination of that next turn plus Barb Barrage will be able to take out this Dragonite. So now he's basically only got one hit left in him. I have to decide whether I want to Terra early or just stick with it. In the end, I decide not to Terra because even when he is at neutral, um, I'm taking an Earthquake from him very, very easily. And I can just take him out right here, right now, with no problems. There's also the chance that he predicts my Terra and goes for Iron Head. As you see, he just goes for Earthquake here. That does about half of what I have left. I'm going to go for the Barb Barrage. That's going to take him down to nearly gone. And the Toxic is going to finish off the job. So Hisuian Quillfish on debut is going to take out the Dragonite just like I wanted it to. So in comes Azalea, that is going to be the Hisuian Electrode. I'm going to need Quillfish later on. I know it's at fairly low health, but I'm still going to need it as a switch in to that Quaquavel at some point. So my thing is, I have to go either into well, any one of my things that isn't Hisuian Samurai. They should all be able to take this on fairly effectively. I'm nervous about going into Thunderous because he could be Terra Ice with the Terra Blast. Uh, I believe, spoiler alert, he is. Um, so for me, it's either Sylveon or Annihilate. And I think Sylveon's going to be more useful later for setting up screens if I need them. So Annihilate is going to be my choice. So, going to withdraw my Quillfish, get on out of there and go into my Special Defensive Nature, AV Annihilate. This should be taking hits very well even after the hazards. As you can see, Electrode's just going to go for that Thunderbolt. And that's going to do around 100 damage. And that's nowhere near taking me out. Even if he goes for another one, it's not going to take me out. So I am absolutely primed to go for Rage Fist here. If he switches out, it's a base 100 attack. If he goes to try and damage me more, it's a base 150. And he will drop. So, he's going to go for the Thunderbolt. That's going to do about another 100. Exactly another 100. Rage Fist is going to come in. And this is going to decimate the Hisuian Electrode. It goes down and reveals Aftermath, which I was not anticipating. I thought he would be soundproof. I think actually he was supposed to be. But um, this build he went with Aftermath. It gets a lot of damage on Annihilate. But the Electrode, the fastest thing on the field, is down. So now in comes Medusa. That is the Aspathra. Now this thing is very dangerous. Uh, speed boost, calm mindsets are all over the place. And I think about this for a long time. In the end, what I decide to do is just go for the Rage Fist. If he gets greedy and tries to set up, he's going to die. And I don't really want to switch in anything on this immediately. So my play here is to stay in, go for Rage Fist, and just try and react to what he's going to do with this Aspathra. He's actually just going to stay in and go for Shadow Ball. The correct play on his part. No sense in getting greedy in front of this Annihilate. I was never going to switch it out. So he takes me out, but uh, now I'm going to be able to react to him. Turns out he's life ball this Bathra, and he has speed boost. So now I need to decide what I'm going into. 
And my immediate answer is going to be my Hisuian Samurai. Now I know I'm going to need this for the Chi Yu eventually, but if I went into uh, Sylveon and he started setting up Calm Minds, even with my screens, he would beat me one on one. He'd outdo me and then he'd be unstoppable. So I have to go into Tagarung here. <clears throat> There's no way that he's going to stay in and go for Dazzling Gleam, but I'm going to go for the Ceaseless Edge anyway to get up some spikes and I'm assuming that he's going to go into his Quaquavel on this. But I kind of have to do this. Uh, this thing's too much of a threat to mess with. And as you see, <clears throat> he is going to withdraw and he is going to go straight into Paradise, and that is going to be his Quaquavel. It takes a bit of rocks damage. I'm going to go for the Ceaseless Edge here, land it, and do a nice little chunk to this guy and get my spikes up. I don't want to be staying in here though. Um, he could go straight for like a CC or something nasty. I'm assuming he's going to spin. But uh, I'm going to go into my Hisuian Quillfish, take the uh, Hazard damage. Uh, he's in fact going to, after the Intimidate, <clears throat> go for the Rapid Spin. So all my Hazards are gone, and for the most part, can't be set up again. Uh, because I'm going to need Samurai for the Chi Yu, which hasn't made an appearance yet. But, with him in here, um, he can either go for Aqua Step, or he can go for like CC or something. Um, if you go to close combat right now, I do go down even at minus one, and I can't afford to let him get a Moxie boost. So my play is to Terrastalize into Fairy and drop a Toxic on him. And that is what I'm going to do. <clears throat> I'm going to Terrastalize my Quillfish into a Fairy type. I'm guaranteed pretty much to live any hit from him now that I'm Terrastalized Fairy, even if he goes to CC, and I'll be able to get a Toxic and react from there. So, nice Fairy Quillfish. Gonna tank an Aqua Step very easily. Um, on 23 hit points, <clears throat> his speed goes up, he's now at plus two, including that spin, and I'm able to get Toxic off on him and just start wearing him down. Now I feel like if he had SD, he'd have gone for it by now. What I'm gonna do is switch out and go into my Sylveon, because I don't fear him at minus one, and I don't want him to get a Moxie boost. So I go into Sylveon, he's gonna go for Aqua Step. And this is gonna do a good chunk, about 120 damage, and he's he's raising his speed, but he's not raising his attack, and he's still at minus one, and he's still being worn down by Toxic. This is my chance to get up screens, and it might seem weird to be withdrawing a Pokemon at such low health that's just going to die to spikes. What it does mean for me, though, is I have something to sack to hazards to avoid him getting a Moxie boost if it comes to that. So my play is to go for Reflect. He's going to go for Aqua Step. That's going to do, again, about 120 points of damage. He's going to be at, like, plus 4 speed, which doesn't matter. And I'm going to get my Reflect up. Now, with that Reflect up, I might be able to live another one and get my second screen up, which would be useful for his last two mons. As you'll see here, the Toxic procs him into Citrus Berry range, uh, which is possibly going to be useful later on. My play is to hope I live another Aqua Step and get up a Light Screen. So he's going to go for Aqua Step, it's going to come in on Sylveon, and we live on a smidgen of health, which is really, really good, because now I can get my light screen up. So I have two screens up, <clears throat> which, looking at the amount of mons we've got left, could be there for the duration of the game now, because we're getting into endgame territory. But, my Sylveon is at very, very low health. This is the opportunity I have to sack my Quarfish to the hazards to stop him getting a Moxie boost and getting back to neutral on the attack. And that's what I'm going to do. I take this opportunity to switch out Sylveon and go into Quillfish, who has done a really, really good job so far of walling out his physical threats, but now it's time for it to be sacked off to avoid him getting out of control. So that is what's going to happen. Quillfish goes down, having done really good. And as you'll see, the Quaquavel went for Aqua Step, which would have got him to plus six speed and back to neutral attack. Now he lives the Toxic on a sliver of health, but it'll take him out next turn. This is the opportunity to set up my agility with Thunderous Therian. He's going to go down to Toxic next turn, which means I have no reason not to go into this behind screens, go for agility, and try and sweep through his last two mons if possible. If Thunderous can't do it, Samurott might be able to. So this game is still in my grasp. I can still do this, but I have to play it right. Now here's at Nazcar speed, he's going to outpace me, go for Aqua Step, he's actually going to crit me. But we do just about live it, and we're able to go for the agility. This is going to be huge. Um, if that is Scarf Chi Yu in the back, we need that agility to outpace it and get a big hit off with Focus Blast. 
Quokovil is going to go down to Poison, another KO for Hisuian Quillfish, post-mortem, very nice. And now it is the rest of my squad, well basically it's this and Samrock, because Sylveon dies to hazards, versus Chi Yu and Aspathra. The Chi Yu is going to make its appearance. Now, he is at full health, he's got the Beads of Ruin, um, he will take me out with anything. I just have to hope that I can land a Focus Blast. It's the only thing that can take him out. I think there's only like three damage rolls if he's no HP, which I'm assuming he isn't, um, that won't take him out with Focus Blast, and I'll take those odds any day of the week. So, I'm going to go for Focus Blast. We do land it, and we get the lowest possible roll and he doesn't go down. He's going to go for Dark Pulse. It turns out he is Scarfed. So it's good that I got that agility up. But now, it is Samurott versus the world. In comes Samurott. Now, this thing, as I say, is Scarfed. I was expecting it to be, so I'm going to play like it is. And spoiler alert, it is. I have to go for Sucker Punch here. Um, and just hope to take this thing out. I go for Sucker Punch. And he does go for the attack. This is going to take out Chi Yu. Down it goes. A kill notched for Samurott. And now, it is just Espathra left. I am behind a light screen. I have Assault Vest. I am max special defense. I am certain there is no way he can take me out. All I have to do is go for Ceaseless Edge and hope that it hits. That is everything. If I can hit the Ceaseless Edge, I will win. Unless he crits me with Dazzling Gleam that I'm certain he will be packing. So... It's going to come down to this. This is what we've all been building up to. He is waiting. He is going to go for the Dazzling Gleam. It's going to come in. It's going to do very little damage with all my buffs. He loses some HP to the Life Orb. I'm going to go for Ceaseless Edge. It's going to take out the Asmathra. Down it goes. We're going to get a layer of spikes up for literally no reason. Because, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be the game. So... We take a win. Oh boy, what a game that was. My goodness, I was like shaking towards the end of it. So many things going on in that game uh, that could have been different. And there's actually quite a lot of talking points. First off, great game, Dr. Slacking. A pleasure to play against him again. Uh, his links, again, in the description. Make sure you check them out. Make sure you see his side of this battle. He's got great content. He's a great guy, so do that. Yeah, um, first things first, really happy with my transfers. <clears throat> Hisui and Quillfish put in an absolute ton of work in that game. I would not have won that game without Hisui and Quillfish. Um, and Thunderous did its thing too, you know? Um, it's possible that without that big Thunderous chip damage on the Chiyu, I would not have won that game. They all come down to like how well my light screen would do and how well my Samrock could take a hit um, from various things. But yeah, I mean, big talking point for me was what happened to Cleavor. I did Cleavor dirty there. Um, it was a bit of a problem. Um, yeah, so like I say, I missed the cursed body proccing. And because of that, I was so confused as to why he brought in Dragonite. That was quite clearly a weakness policy. Um, so I was like, how is he planning on living this stone axe that's coming in? <clears throat> and by the time I'd done the calcs I thought I, thought I needed to, my time had run out. Um, but because I was scarfed and cursed bodied, I couldn't go for an attack other than struggle. Which looks like a really, really bad throw, and at the time I thought it was. Weirdly, it kind of worked out for me. And the reason is, because the Pokemon I would have switched in to take that Iron Head was going to be Hisuian Quillfish. And if you remember, I saved Hisuian Quillfish till the very end to sack off to Spikes, so that he wouldn't get Moxie on his Quackwavel. If I'd have taken that Iron Head, I wouldn't have had that HP left, and I wouldn't have been able to make that work. His Quackwell would have got a boost, and it might have been able to do more damage um, against, like, various ones of my mons. So, in a weird, weird way, my mess up with Cleavor worked out better for me in the long run. Which is odd, but cool. So, yeah, Quillfish put in an absolute shift. I love what Thunderous did. A bit unfortunate to get one of three rolls that wouldn't take out the GU. But it worked out in the end because Samurott was able to clean up. So Samurott did its job as well. Various things did work. That's probably, I would say, without question, actually, the best game I've played this season. Um, everything did its job. Um, it certainly overshadows week four because week four I didn't deserve to win. I think that one I played well um, and reacted 
to the things I wasn't expecting quite well. But um, yeah, we've managed to take a big old scalp against Dr. Slacking. Um, prior to week six, he was second in bolt division. So I'm absolutely stoked I managed to, uh, to pull that one off. Um, but yeah, we're two and four now. And what that means is that playoffs are not outside the realms of possibility. We can still do it. If we win the last two games, then we have a real chance. But that is not going to be easy. Because next week is a fucking grudge match. Next week, we take on the man who is the reason behind Tornadus' nickname. Next week, we take on my very good friend Frank Trode and FC4 Corona. That's going to be big. That's going to be big. I've got a score to settle with this man after what happened in PPL before. Um, for those of you who don't know, it came down to my Tornadus versus his Stoutland um, for the win for the game. And I missed a hurricane. <laughs> so that's an interesting one. Looking forward to that game. Um, in the meantime, absolutely, once again, for the final, for the final time, please check out Dr. Slacking. His link's in the description along with all the other Flare and Bolt coaches. Uh, but you're going to want to check out his content. He's a very good battler. He's a very good commentator. And I'm a big fan of his content. So you should be too. Check it out. But I'm going to get out of here. I've rammed on far too long. So my final thank you to you all for watching. And I guess with that, I'll see you next time. Laters.